self-awareness. So this is the one that I'm passionate about. Like for me, so much has worked for me because I understand myself in space. Strengths, right? weaknesses, etc. Yeah, it, and also when you deploy empathy with self-awareness. By the way, being Gary V is all based on this. Like I'm aware why somebody be like, fuck this dude. I'm empathetic to that. I get all of it. It makes it palpable. It, here's actually, talk about something that's powerful. My greatest fear was to create fear in my companies. I hate fear. You don't want a culture of fear in the business. And that's what I think everybody does. Yeah. And I didn't want to rule by fear because I know it's Only powerful. Only the paranoid survive. And my dad ruled yeah. by fear. So I became very visceral to it. Um, when I had to wake up four or five years ago and finally the subconscious became the conscious and I realized that my lack of candor actually was creating a ton of fear at VaynerMedia because people didn't know where they stood and you would have- I You were telling people what they wanted to hear. You were, you were avoiding yes, things. That's right. No, I think- I, I was massaging. Ahead. I was trying to coach it through in a different way. I, would, I didn't care about money. It also so, creates politics, right? Because people are like, we're not getting the truth. We got to do this correct, side action. Correct. Stuff. And more importantly, pandering to me because I'm the ruler, right? And so when I really had that, that was a really dark moment for me in my career because when you realize the thing you most didn't want to do was happening- and so then I had to market to myself. I was like, candor doesn't work for me and literally chipped away at it. And when the word kind went in front of it, it's been wild. And by the way, the last 18, 24 months where my game has gone from a 10 out of 100 to call it maybe I'm a 60 out of 100 right now, that 50 has been monumental in my business success. Interesting. And so that motivated me to say, fuck, I can't believe how much of an impact this is having because I had a lot of things going for me. But man, just this one, what happens if I actually get people to truly just deploy accountability? Because everybody that is listening right now has worked with somebody who just blames people for everything. It just is what the way it is. And like, if you make that change, everybody around you will adjust very quickly, right? right? Um, patience, I've come to learn was so easy for me and is like impossible for everybody. Mainly, this is how I got down the path, mainly because I didn't realize how many people valued other people's opinions. So of course you want to be successful at 25. You want to show your mom. You want to show your friends. You want to show the world. Of course you're lacking patience. You want a BMW. You want a Rolex. You want a blue check mark. You want a million followers. You want to be an entrepreneur. And all this bad behavior happened in the last decade because of it. Well, I think it's important to point out how they interrelate with each other because th this is so when people hear accountability or humility or candor in isolation, they're OK, but you can they can also turn into problems. Right. So for the Stoics, when we're talking courage, temperance, justice, wisdom, courage for an unjust cause or a stupid cause. Right. Doesn't work. Patience for something that isn't not, working. If you're not holding yourself accountable to the patience or you're you're not being empathetic, they all interrelate. Can I ask to you a question? Other. What about this one? Because this one is I, number two. Gratitude. No, gratitude oh, is my fucking everything. Yes. Gratitude is number one on this list and back for a reason. Yeah. Every day's good. Of course. You're alive. You're alive. Nobody died. You're a black swan of black swans. We should not exist. 800, that's right, 400 trillion to one. Yeah. 850 million people on earth do not have access to clean water. The fuck am I upset about this meeting getting canceled? And, and how, how much would you have killed to be in the position you are in right now and taking for granted, right? Oh. Like we would be, the Stoics talk about how if we lost what we have, we would be devastated. And if we saw someone else with what we have, five years earlier, we'd be insanely jealous of them. And then we'd sit around going like, un being unhappy with what we have. It's insane. Yeah, t so no, but number- Self-awareness. Yeah, self-awareness. So this is the one that I'm passionate about. Like for me, so much has worked for me because I understand myself in space. Strengths, right? weaknesses, et cetera. Yeah, it, and also when you deploy empathy with self-awareness. By the way, being Gary V is all based on this. Like, I'm aware why somebody be like, fuck this dude. I'm empathetic to that. I get all of it. It makes it palpable. 
To me, this is why ego is so dangerous, right? You can't make stuff for other people, whether it's art or products. Like when you think about Kanye West or Steve Jobs, we think of them as egotistical people. Not at all. They couldn't have been while they were making Incredibly stuff. Incredibly not true. Because it was rooted not just in empathy for other people, but an understanding of what, where. A hundred percent. They're reverse engineering the consumer. Yeah. Has to they may them. be audacious. They may be aggressive. They may be. They listen. I do it. They may enjoy the communication of what they're up to in your face. But Muhammad Ali and Babe Ruth did the same thing, and people were mad at them until they weren't. Right. Like, like it's not super complicated. Like, if you're good enough to call your shots. So how do you cultivate self-awareness then? That's the, that's the paradox. Well, what was funny about this book, and I appreciate you reading it, you saw I actually took a real stab at it. Like I really sat there and said, okay, great. I can put these 13 things down and what? Enjoy yourself, right? So yeah. I did these exercises. I, I really tried to create this thing that I've replicated because it's been asked of me a lot through the years. And the game I won with some people, more inner circle, occasional fans, is sit down three to four people that are closest to you in the world have a kumbaya for two hours and eliminate all fear from them on giving you the truth and then create an anonymous structure for them to tell you your strengths and weaknesses and then whatever, like once you start playing with that, whatever is uh, resonating or not resonating, you start double clicking into, right? You start challenging yourself to be uncomfortable. Like like to me, uh, can I actually, I'm gonna go very vulnerable here. The candor thing happened very simply. I went in, saw an interaction between two former employees on some social network and they didn't like me. And I loved them. And I went to bat for them for a long time and I entitled them. I overcoddled them because I wasn't able to give them feedback. And then I got to my wits end and I fired them and I'm the bad guy. And I sat there and I said, I am a man who long ago became fulfilled financially. Fucking $100,000. That was it. It all changed after that. Not another time in my life has anything felt like anything. It was all extra from there? All extra from that little of a number. Okay? That must be very nice. It's incredibly nice. That's yeah. why I've been so happy. Yeah. I'm a man that's not motivated by that. I care about how many people show up to my funeral. I've got all these things going on. I'm talking all these things. And why are these two wonderful people who had plenty of love for me at one point, why are they sitting here having a convo shitting on me? I'm like, it's, I'm doing, I I, I pushed myself further. I'm like, I've got a flaw and I'm gonna fucking fix it. And I knew what it was, but I didn't, couldn't like get it to your, you know how you can't get it to your fucking tongue? I'm like, it's fucking candor. Fuck. And then I started going down, why do I hate it so much? And I go into, my mom doesn't have it, she's my hero, she raised me. Then I look, my dad has it, but the way he delivered it was so negative, everybody hated my dad that worked for him. You overcompensated. I I overcompensated. Like I've come to learn that when something's over here, you wanna go in the middle, not over, like, but I went, I fucking went. That's what temperance is, the the perfect Respect, so I didn't have the right temperance on it, and it became my half, and I'm excited to talk about it. And it's so crazy because it is my strength as a public figure. I love your no bullshit. Like it's like, it's all I get. And it's because the context of the setting. Speaking right. into the ether, piece Easier. of cake. Speaking to Sally, who I know like has a sick kid, fuck me. Right. And the over empathy and over comp, you know, compassion and the over sympathy, which are nice things. I went too far. I couldn't find my temperance, you know? No, that makes sense. I'm in this writer's group, uh, like James Clear, Mark Manson. We get together once a year. We sit around and everyone gets to talk. We we all take turns. We get to talk about the person as if they're not in the room. Mm. And they can't say anything. All they can do is take notes. And it's super powerful because you get to see how people you actually care about, not just random people on the internet or whatever, think about you and your work. And you feel like everyone's caught good candor? Yeah, yeah, Good. and and but because they are in the room, you're still going to be kind, Correct. right? And so, and you can't go all the way there, right? But you can you can plant the seed of what they can take back and go, you know what? They're right. I am doing too much of this, or not enough of this, or why am I being held back here? And then you take that back and you work on it. You, it's ironic because we're talking about self awareness, but one of the best ways to get it is from other people. I would say a spouse being the primary way because. They know you better than anyone, and uh, they can also speak to you the most directly. I think that 
It is just a big goddamn deal. And all of this is, and it's really time that we actually talk about it as like, the, like the alternate title to this is the soft skills are hard. Ooh, that'd be a good title. Thank you. You know, and so that to me is what, um, right. Cause it's a double cut, right? Oh, fuck. Anyway, I, uh, I'm just ready for this cause I know it to be true. I know it to be true. Of course you can build an empire by not being nice. A lot of them are that way. Of course. Right? <laughs> but if you're on the other side of reading it, wouldn't it be nice to enjoy it? Like, have you met the 70 year old Titans that did it the other way? Nobody they're disliked. More they're than disliked. That, person. that person's fucking life blows. Like, I love that you put these people on a pedestal. They're not happy. They're not as happy as you think. Like for real. Yeah. No, no. It's, uh, you would, if you actually knew what it was like in their head, you would not trade places with them for all the money in the world. It's why I always get crazy about that. I'd rather cry in my Ferrari than, but like, how about not crying? Yeah. How about smiling in your fucking whatever? Yeah. Ford. Or you're jealous of this person who's traveling on a private jet to some exotic, what, what if you had a life that you didn't need to run away from? Right. Like, like, what are we talking about? Like, yeah. All right. A couple more quick riffs. Mark Cerelius says, uh, strict with yourself, tolerant with others. How do you like that? A lot. Yeah. Yes. I would actually argue that that's where I need to find a little bit of balance. My strictness with me is such a healthy one and my tolerance with others may be too extreme back to lack of candor. I'm trying to get a little bit better. Coddling, entitlement. Um, but my strictness with me is really cool. Uh, it's not like I eat at five or wake up. At, it's, it's this ability to not compromise on a couple of things. And the biggest one is kindness. Yeah, or it's like if you're driven and ambitious, you work 15 hours a day, it can be really easy to just expect that from other people. One of my favorite videos, you're talking to someone, they're like, you're like, the other people, they're not owners of the business. Yeah. You can't expect well, what you expect absurd. of yourself of them. It's absurd. I, I once said to somebody, I'm like, you're talking as if we're talking about slavery. Yeah. Like, the fuck are you talking about? Um, yeah, my, I have zero expectations of others. If I'm being really honest, I take that way it. You're always pleasantly surprised. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I'm accountable. It's like, look, I mean, yeah, I, I love that. And I'm a believer of it. Yeah. And look, it's called self-discipline, right? Not, not, you know, nothing else. I've been it's thinking a lot about why people point fingers, why people have fallen in love with judgment of others. And I've come to realize it's because they're practicing on themselves. You know, my inability to overjudge myself is exactly why I don't judge others. We're, we're holding ourselves up to, we're the judge and jury and we're putting ourselves into jails. Right. Right? Like it's nice yeah. to have asper. I mean, I'm ambitious as fuck. Sure. It's nice to have standards. I'm not saying that, but like this notion of beating yourself up when you fall short on something that is a standard or an ambition is incredibly unhealthy. Well, it's like you would never talk to someone else the way that you talk to yourself. But what's funny is mine is actually slightly twisted on that. I talk to everybody the way I talk to myself, which is why I talk so nicely to everybody. But that's how you want it, right? But mo a lot of people talk to themselves in a way that they would never tolerate. Correct, because to most else. people try to prop themselves up by tearing everybody else down. Right. All right. So, Mark Surrealist, again, uh, the best revenge, the best way to get even is to not be like them. My, I think there's something that I like that. Uh, my version on revenge is a little bit more like the inability to even care about their action. To so shrug it off. In, in a more audacious way. Okay. Not only shrug it off, recognize that you're about to actually stick it to them by not even acknowledging it happened. It's, it's an extreme version of cutting them out of your ecosystem. Sure. That's how I've dealt with like people that have done really not nice things or trying to go, like it's almost as if it didn't happen. Yes. It like goes on this nice little shelf. I'm like, that's nice. You can play with yourself in that cocoon of like whatever you feel about me. You've now become a energy that is just like, 
not a good use of time. And even giving it time, and to be frank, I've evolved a little bit from that. I'm now receiving that energy and kind of deploying really deep sympathy. The thought at this point in my life that you wanna spend any of your time hurting somebody else's feelings seems outrageously foreign and really just makes me feel compassionate. The ultimate person who suffers from it is them. A hundred, all that we're doing out here is, exp- somebody said something to me yesterday, I did something kind of cool, giving away some stuff, and, they're, and, and they were like kind of asking, I was like late, I was getting home, I was just replying, I'm like, it's just because I have so much love to give, I don't know what to do with it all. That's sweet. And I really think that that's, that a lot of people live the reverse. They have so much pain, they're trying to get it out. You know, for me, it's an abundance of love. I'm like, fuck it, like, I don't wanna, like, what am I gonna, like, this is like, I better do stuff. Right. Um, I think that's how hate works. 